Today, we're supported by Isotoner. And listen, I absolutely love the Zen's line. It's Z-E-N-Z from Isotoner. These are adorable little slip-ons that are just built for moms on the go like me. Today, I'm wearing a gray pair that's called the Zen's Women Serenity Slip-On. It has this adorable little pin tuck in the fabric, these cute little white soles. And these were featured on OprahDaily.com, so you know that they're popular, right? They are machine washable, super soft, like really flexible, and very, very lightweight. They have this better than memory foam technology in them. So really comfortable, but also really lightweight. And I love that they look more like a shoe than a slipper. So it's the perfect everyday slip-on to take you from your house to work, to yoga, to coffee, to the bus stop, wherever you need to be. And for the next two weeks, my friends at Isotoner are giving our listeners 35% off of the Zen's line. Just head over to isotoner.com and use the code BRILLIANT35 to get your discount. Okay, guys, go find your happy place with Zen's. I'm Sherilyn Skolnicki, and this is Brilliant Balance the show for working women who are ready to shine. Each week, I bring you ideas, inspiration, and insight on balance, business, and getting it all done gracefully. You ready? Let's be brilliant. Hello, my friends. This is episode 238, and we're talking today about threshold rituals. So I wonder... If you have ever had one of your children do this to you, it's it's not my favorite memory. And this has happened to me on more than one occasion over the years. But if you ever had one of your kids come up to you and say something like, Mom, you're always working. Even when you're here, you're not really here. It's the worst, right? Anyone who has ever gotten this feedback immediately wants to do one thing, and that is justify her actions. So you you know you start hearing yourself say things like, "Wait, I'm just on my phone for a minute because, you know, dot dot dot, right? Or just just hold on, this is only going to take one second. I'll be right there." Or you say, "I'm not actually working. I'm just answering this one question." Or, hey, my boss just needs this one thing, or this client, or customer, or patient. You know, it's inevitable. We are immediately exposed. We feel trapped, and we just want to get out of that corner that we've backed ourselves into. But the reality is that experience is just, it's just inevitable. I mean, we wear a lot of hats, which means we're pulled in a lot of different directions. And we have to switch gears on the regular. So we are knee deep in that email when our daughter needs homework help, you know, right that minute. Or we're pondering a creative project when our son decides he needs a snack. Am I right? It's it's not like we can plan for those interruptions. And I think it's harder than ever to be fully present. There's just so many distractions. We've talked about the technology realm of distractions. It's harder than ever to be fully present, but it's something that I'll bet you really want. And the power of being fully present for each moment in your day sounds so appealing, or you know, maybe it just sounds like a fantasy. And I've I've worked on this a lot back in my corporate career. I think. Um, my kids were really young for that chapter of my life, and I was really bad at it. I, I worked all the time. And then early in my life as an entrepreneur, I couldn't figure out how to turn it off. Like I just loved work so much. I loved what I do. I still love what I do so much that I could not figure out how to turn it off. And so that can really present this challenge where you end up in this situation over and over again. And one thing I learned, and I I think I just backed into this sort of by accident or through a lot of trial and error, is I discovered the power of threshold rituals. Threshold, like, you know, picture, you know, the bride getting carried across the threshold, right? Sort of the doorframe. Threshold rituals are what I started calling these 
transitional moments. And they're really the key that I use to help me be where I am, you know, to be fully present in one interaction or one zone of my day at a time. These threshold rituals, and I'm going to talk about several of them, they are what can help us transition gracefully from one moment in our day to the next so that we can bring our whole self to each activity that we've chosen to do, right? We don't want to be, you know, half-heartedly listening to our teenager talk about their day while we are scrolling on our phone trying to see how that email landed. You know, like no one feels good about that. I think it happens to all of us all the time, but no one feels very good about it when it does. So I want to look at four times in my day that I found I need a threshold ritual. These might be the same times that you need one, or you might have your own transition periods, but I'm going to share a few of mine. And you might hear the thunderstorms in the background. It's like we're having like a really stormy day here today. So who knows if the mic will pick up the uh, the thunderstorms we're, we're having roll through. Okay, four threshold rituals um, f- that I'm going to share. And I think about, uh, let me just back up a half step. When I think about my day, I think about it in zones that I wake up essentially in a zone that's dedicated to myself. I have sometimes only five minutes and sometimes I get lucky and there's more like an hour. But in most days, I get to start my day with a little bit of time for me to get ready, to work out, to have a little bit of quiet time. And then I go into a zone that's all about my family and I'll talk about that. And then to work and then sort of back to family And back to a little bit of time for me at the very end of my day. So my day at this life stage splits into sort of five segments or zones. And these threshold rituals sit at the intersections. So the first one I think about as moving from self-care to morning launch. Okay, so when I get up, Ideally, it's all about me for a little bit. Uh, That's the period of time when I'm brushing my teeth and, you know, getting my contacts in, and then ideally getting some exercise and then getting in the shower and getting ready, you know, spending some time doing my hair, putting on makeup, getting dressed. That ritual is deeply important to me. It's deeply grounding to have a little bit of time that I have to myself. And I have carved that out forever and ever, amen. Like even through the years of having very young children, I really tried to sort of beat them to the wake up time so I could have a little bit of time for me to get grounded and centered before I sort of launched into the day. Doesn't always work perfectly. None of these things do, right? So if you have a standard in your mind that it has to be perfect every day, probably setting yourself up for disappointment. But if you can anchor in some moments to yourself in the morning, that's been very powerful for me. So when that's over, and again, sometimes it's very brief and sometimes it's a little bit longer, I need to make a shift to what I call the morning launch. And the morning launch is that period of time that's all about, you know, hey, come on, it's time to get up. Lunches need packed. Shoes need to be found. Homework needs to get back into the backpack. You know, the buses are at the corner. There's like sort of this happy chaos that needs to be managed during the morning launch when everyone is getting up and ready and out the door. And that is a pretty different energy than the energy that I want to bring to that short period of self-care in the morning, right? That period, I want to be mostly silent. I want to be focused on myself. I want to be thoughtful. Sometimes I'm listening to something that's an entertaining podcast or music that's my choice. But when we go into the morning launch, it is definitively not about me. You know, that is a period where I need to transition into being of service to the rest of my family. So, question that I ask myself is how do you want them to feel? How do I want these people that I love to feel this morning? What would start their day strong, right? What's the energy that I want to bring to our interaction? What's the words that I want to greet them with? And then it's kind of like I put on my lipstick, I take one last look in that mirror, I tell myself I've got this, and 
probably turn on some sort of happy music and then head in to be all about the kids for a period of time. So that transition from self-care to morning launch is sort of wrapping up, putting away the things I've been using to get ready, making sure that my bathroom's like tidied up, bed's made, and then it's off to be of service, really grounded in how do I want to make these people feel? What's my intention for that interaction? Now, trust me, I'm not as nerdy about this as that probably just sounded. Like this is not a long, drawn out process. It's a quick sort of reminder to myself that as everything gets put away, you know, that hairdryer gets put in the drawer and the makeup bottles get put back where they belong, it's time to let go of that and go be of service. And that is usually enough to sort of snap me into the zone that I need to be in for the morning launch. Chaos reigns during the morning launch, right? Just like every household out there. So we're getting everyone out the door. And then there's the next transition, which is from sort of tidying up after the morning launch to buckling down to work. So after that launch or driving carpool or getting them to the bus or whatever's happening, I usually need a few minutes to tidy things up. You know, put away the breakfast dishes, those crumbs from making lunch, you know, maybe a load of laundry goes in. So a little bit of that is a great threshold ritual for me because it says, okay, this is now ending this chapter of being of service to others. And I'm going to now get my head in the game to work, right? I'm going to buckle down to work. So that threshold ritual, and again, these are very simple touchstones that just help me say I'm in a different zone involve pouring a cup of coffee or tea, depending on kind of what mood I'm in. In the winter, almost always lighting a candle at my desk is just feels like it's starting something. I don't do that in the summer. I'm not sure why. I read something that I have written to myself in, in our program. We call it the morning formula. I read through that and I review my priorities for the day. So, you know, that you've probably heard me talk about this before. I live and die by a plan for the week. So that breaks down into plans for the day. And I get myself grounded in what are those big moments in, t- in this day that where I really want to land the pose. You know, I really want to hit my mark in those moments. And then what are the other things that I that I plan to get done during the day? And then it's wheels up and I am in work mode. Do you ever find yourself saying, I just need a minute to breathe? While the whole idea of meditation can sound totally intimidating, I've found that stepping away from the chaos of life, even just for a few minutes, is incredibly restorative. So if you're short on time, but could use a few moments of peace right about now, listen to my five-minute meditation for working moms. It'll help you clear your head and come back to your day feeling centered and refreshed. Head over to brilliant-balance.com forward slash breathe. Press play and settle in for a few mini moments of peace right now. So sometimes I have to, as part of my morning formula, set aside something that I have been worrying about or thinking about or obsessing about you know, related to one of the kids or something that happened that morning in order to get into a work mode. And I have to remind myself, like, it will be there when I get back to it. So part of that threshold ritual to be able to be in a zone where I'm going to fully think about work involves what am I going to have to let go of or lay down in order to do that. So think about that as you're thinking about shaping these threshold rituals. At that point, like, I'm seated at my desk, I have my hot coffee, I've read through these statements, I know my priorities, and it's go time, okay? That goes on throughout the day, and there is a point at which I have to make the next transition, and that's from sort of all business to family business, right? I'm going to cross the threshold from being all business to family business. So this is a closure ritual. This is where I need to close down my workday. And if you asked me which of these threshold rituals is the most important in my life, it's probably this one. And for a lot of the women in our community who I'm actively coaching, one of the things they struggle with is how do I put the work away? If you go back to how I started this episode, 
the thing that we're beating ourselves up about is we're, that work is dragging its way into the rest of our day, right? It's coming home with us. It's seeping into our evening. It's seeping into the morning. And we don't want it there, right? We're letting it sort of be all around us all the time. So this ritual to move from all business to family business is the one that really helps with that. So the first thing I do in this this ritual is update my weekly plan. So I start the morning by looking at it. And when I'm wrapping up, I say, okay, what didn't get done? And I think of this as playing Tetris with my undone items. You know, they need to land somewhere. So all of these sort of floating items that maybe didn't get finished, even though I hoped they would today, need to land in a new place. So best case scenario, I reassign them to another time slot in the week. Worst case scenario, I just make a parking lot and I put my list there, right? These this, these are the few things that did not get finished. They're taking up headspace. I need to make sure I don't forget them tomorrow. And then I have a sense of closure. If anything has kind of migrated around my desk and is, you know, if there's paper or whatever, coffee cups and water cups, those things get cleared off. So I'm back to like a fresh slate for the next morning. Often my hair goes up. So it it is amazing what kind of a cue that is to me that it's time to change gears, right? If I put my hair up on top of my head or I put in a ponytail, that's a reminder to me of like, okay, we're changing zones. And then much like in the morning, I'm trying to ground myself in an intention for how do I want to show up now, you know, as a wife, as a mother, as a daughter, as a friend, like there is a different cast of characters in that next part of my day. And they really don't want business me, right? That's not the me that they know and love. So what do I need to do to subtly shift my energy so that I show up for them? And I will tell you, it is almost always about being responsive. You know, for me, it's about being ready to listen and being willing to respond, to be fluid and flexible to what they need. And then it's time to greet my family. And so that's, you know, usually the kids are coming home from school or coming home from an activity, and my husband is wrapping up a call, and there's sort of this regathering of the family to move into that late afternoon and evening part of the day. You know, those are my details. I work from home these days. My husband also works from home. That's the rhythm of our household. Your rhythm is going to be unique to your household in terms of where does this transition happen from all business to family business. And so, you know, if you're commuting home, this is when you're getting out of your car and coming into the house. If you've been traveling, this is when you're arriving back at home. So that transition to family business is what am I going to be able to let go of so that I can give my attention to these people I love for the next period of time, you know, few hours of the day, and then also know when am I going to get back to me for a little bit? So the last threshold ritual for me, I think of as from hustle and grind to ease and flow, right? From that kind of, we got a lot of stuff happening, even as a family, there's still a lot of hustle in that afternoon and evening time. And we want to shift to what I always think of as ease and flow. Like that's the phrase that comes to me. So this is where, if you've heard me, my episode on the wind down routine, that's where this would happen. It's where I change into cozy clothes, you know, like that changes a little bit by the season, but something that's really comfortable and soft. I get out of my contact lenses and into my glasses. It's where I'm dimming the lights in the house and maybe changing the soundtrack and like moving from digital to analog. That's the thing I think about with this particular threshold ritual is moving from digital to analog. A lot of our day is digital. And if you can think of that, even just metaphorically, right, it doesn't have to be literal in its translation, but can we sort of slow things down and make things a little bit more analog for that last period of the day? That's very correlated with ease and flow, right? And it helps us get into a restful state before bedtime. And I think that's why it's so important to me is I have to slow down my pace of productivity, Because that second zone where I'm in work is a lot about productivity. 
And so is that evening family time, right? And really, so was the morning launch. So there's kind of a long period there where there's a lot of push. There's a lot of productive happening. And so finding your way back to a quieter, calmer, easier state of flow, I find very valuable. And it happens for me in that final threshold ritual of the day, that evening one, where I'm moving into that state of ease and flow. So Again, these threshold rituals correlate to the transitions between those five big zones I've split my day into, right? My day begins and ends with me, often exercising in the morning and doing some sort of reading in the evening. At times, those self-zones are minutes long. Like if I'm really tired at night, I might only make it a few minutes with the book. And if I have not slept well or I need a little extra sleep, that morning might get the workout skipped and I might just be in getting ready. But I really try to have a few minutes to be grounded. And sometimes they can be an hour or more. They're the minority of hours in most days for in this chapter of my life. And so if you're in a similar chapter where, you know, you're raising a family and you're running a business, you might find that th- that is a shortened zone, but they ground me. Those those short zones of self-care ground me for what's coming, you know, in the day ahead or they help me wind down before I fall asleep. So I would really encourage you to think about can you get a little bit of that? Being really conscious about these rituals, that's what helps me let go of one phase of the day and reach for the next, you know, kind of like a trapeze artist who's moving from bar to bar. You know, we don't want to overlook the importance of those transitions or we're going to fall. And the goal is to be where you are, to be fully present no matter which zone of the day you're in. So if you want to try this out, Give some thought to your own zones. Think about how your day flows and how you might move between them with a little bit more intention using this concept of a threshold ritual. All right, that is all for today. So if you liked today's episode, share it with a friend. I absolutely love it when I hear from someone, oh, I found your podcast because my friend sent it to me. Like that's awesome. So if you got something out of today's episode or any of them for that matter, share it with a friend. If you're a regular listener, I would love it if you would take a minute to rate or review the show. It means so much to me when I hear your words about what the show has meant to you. I th- This is a recent review I'm going to share with you. It just made my day. She said, I became a listener after hearing her speak at my company this week. I was immediately hooked by the first few episodes. I listen to a ton of personal development podcasts, but this one really stands out. It was as if she knew me personally and was teaching me exactly what I need for what I'm struggling with on my life journey. I feel I can actually put what she shares into action because she makes it simpler and more practical than other things I've found, and I've been a searcher in this area for a long time. So thank you, thank you for that amazing review. I love it when you take your precious time to share a few words about the show so that others can find it. That is everything I have for you today, my friends. Till next time, let's be brilliant. This is the podcastfactory.com.